Hello, hello everyone. Happy Friday and welcome to Makers with Vicki. In case you haven't watched one of these episodes before, this is, I want to say our third, although I've been working with the company that, that um, has brought me here today for quite some time. They're called Makers Mercantile. And we decided that we would create our own little thing uh, that's just their gig that are a little bit different from my usual Facebook live feeds. So Makers with Friday from this day forward shall always happen on the first Friday. So that's easy to, to remember, right? Because of alliteration. The first Fridays right here on my Facebook page. That's at Vicki Howell at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 Central, where I am, uh, 1.30 if you live on the East Coast. And if, in, if you're in the UK, 6.30-ish. You get the idea. So hello from wherever you are. As always, whenever you watch me live, I love, love, love knowing where you're watching from. We are a community, a global community. So share that with each other um, where you are. Okay, so the other thing that's different, not just the time um, of the week that this video is on that's different about my other videos, is that there's a little bit of a focus. So Makers Mercantile is this wonderful shop. There's both a, both a physical space in um, in Kent, Washington, which for those of you that follow along with me know that I'm producing a new TV show, well, for the web called The Knit Show, but we are actually going to take a camera crew to their shop so you can see I've been talking about Makers Mercantile forever, and now you'll be able to see it live. So that's going to happen this fall, but I digress. They also have an online site that really caters to those of us that are really into the needle arts, um, but also love gifty items and are kind of interested in playing. So mixed media and in experimenting with fibers, yarn or felt or embroidery floss or textiles, but in unexpected ways. So that's really what we're going to be focused on for Makers with Vicky. Every time that we have one of these uh, with these live feeds, you'll be able to watch it later, as always, on Facebook. And you can just go to facebook.com slash Vicki Howell slash videos to find this show and past episodes. But you'll also be sent a link after, well, you won't be sent it. We'll post it in the show notes area that will have a blog post to find all of the direct links to get you everything that we're talking about today. So you actually could go to makersmercantile.com already and click on the blog and you'd see it up. Um, you'd see it up already because we're, we're crafty like that. And in case I forget to tell you later, anytime that you shop with them, you can use the code Vicky10 and I spell my name V-I-C-K-I-E, the number 10, you get 10% off all the time. So that's pretty cool. All right. So today we're going to be talking about really super cool kind of avant-garde art piece made from roving. It's super awesome. It's called it's called the Art Felt Holy Scarf and I'm going to I'm going to walk you through it. This all comes everything that you need for it comes in a kit though and it's super affordable for what this whole gorgeous scarf is cuz this scarf would probably cost like 200 bucks if you found it in a boutique because it's handmade and hand dyed and amazing and I think the kit is under 40. So it's like and that's without our discount, our 10% discount. So it's super awesome. So I'm going to walk you through the kit. And again, the links are on the Makers Mercantile blog. And then I'm going to show you every single step that it takes to make this. Now, you re it really would only take an afternoon to make this. I'm going to make a little mini kind of version and step it out so that you don't have to spend the whole afternoon with me. Not that I'd mind, but, you know, we all, we all have lives to live. Um, and then I'm going to wrap it up showing you, for those of you that maybe are feeling a little less experimental as far as needle arts goes, a really cool knit version that gives you the same effect. So our theme today, mix media to create holy scarves. Let's do this. All right, so if you order the kit, and hello everyone, by the way, let me start. Marit from Norway, I hope I didn't, I hope I didn't mess up your name. Uh, Linda from North Carolina, Michelle from New York City, guys. You're hanging out together and you're in different countries and different states. How awesome is that? All right, so this is what the kit looks like and they ship worldwide. It's called Art Felt. It comes in three different colorways, I believe, and there's pictures of all of those on that blog post. And when you get the kit, it comes with the instructions. Ooh, and someone in Ottawa, Canada, <laughs> Judy from Kent, so you're right near the actual shop. Okay, then it's gonna, going to come with 
for this particular scarf, because this is, let me see if I can show you. This kit is for this version, so you can see this one is actually kind of like a rainbow explosion of action, but they've got a few colorways. They've got this blue one, and they have, oh, I didn't even think about that. You don't have to go to the website. I have them here. Or this actually might be my favorite, this really lovely sort of like oceanic inspired colorway. Um, so they've got all of those options, and it comes with everything that you need to make those scarves. So I'm going to hang that there. So two different bits of beautifully saturated hand dyed roving instructions I already mentioned you get two and they um, you only need one but they like to give you a spare because you know better prepared then it comes with plastic which you'll need for part of the felting process and then it comes with this really great I'm going to actually show you a little piece instead of it comes with a long enough piece of plastic and of, of paper to make the entire scarf because it lays out in one piece. But it looks like this. It kind of looks like fusible webbing if you're a sewist and you're familiar with that. But this is actually gonna dissolve later. So it works as a stabilizer as we're working and then it goes away. So all of this comes with it. And what you're gonna want to also have is some form of tacking board this is what we're using, and I believe they also sell this at Maker's Mercantile. Um, yep, I see it here, and it's it's about five fifty for um, just a square like this. But you can use really any sort of foam. You just need it to be at least an inch an inch in thickness. Okay, so that does not come with it. So you want to get that. And other than that, you're just going to need a few other things that you'd have around the household. So we'll go over those as we're working. All right, I'm gonna set this aside because I actually have a kit that's already open so I don't have to destroy this beautiful kit and work from that one. But what I will say is that to prep, you're going to get this long piece of two. And because you wanna make sure that you, you may not want to, but if you're at all interested in both sides of your scarf mirroring each other or being similar, you wanna make sure that you separate, up, separate your roving ahead of time. So to do that, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to destroy it, but you'd fold it in half and then you would just give about that much room, I would say it's about four or five inches, and just give it a, you know, kind of a tug. Again, I'm not going to do it. So you would do that with both and then you would have an even amount set aside for both sides. Okay, I'm going to get that out of my way. You have to forgive me a little bit. My table runneth over because there are so many steps for this. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of shuffling but we can get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do the little flipper rooney that I do sometimes um, or often on this whenever I do a demo so that you get an overhead shot. We may have to adjust together. I might have to flip back to show you some bigger things. There's a crock pot involved. There's a lasagna pan. It's kind of like I'm in a, on a cooking show, um, but I'm gonna see if we can fit them all in just um, with my current phone camera setup. All right, so the first thing that you need to get started is you would need your paper. Again, this will be in a long strip the way that you need it in the kit. I've cut mine just to make it easier for you to see on camera. I'll be working on small pieces. You will to make this scarf work on the long piece. So that means that you either need, you, you could use a longer piece of tacking board or you can just move it along as you're working. Either is totally fine. Um, again, I see everybody's still coming in. Lisa, hello, Denise from Iowa. Um, Shaheen from California, please, if you're enjoying this video and watching it live or watching it later, please share it with a friend. Um, anybody that you think would be interested in getting creative with fiber arts, we would love them to see this video. All righty. So the first thing we need is we need to get our tack board set up and I will flip the camera in a second so that you can need that or see it. You're going to need the paper, as I mentioned, and you're going to need the bit of roving that you're starting. So Talk amongst yourself as usual, and I'm gonna flip the camera over so we can talk about what to do first. All right. So as I may be in and out of being able to be in camera view, seeing the camera, I may not see all of your questions. However, I believe that the owner of Makers Mercantile, Karen Skissel, is jumping on at some point if she's not already, and she'll also be answering questions. And if both of us miss them, I will be back on the comment section immediately following the live streaming of this video to answer whatever questions may come up that I missed before. 
All right, so I've got my tacking board out and I'm laying out the piece of paper. Again, I'm working on a smaller piece than you would be if you were working with a scarf. The first step to this is called drafting. Now, if any of you have needle felted before, you're probably used to taking big pieces, big pieces of roving and kind of getting them as bunched up as possible and then needle felting as much as you can. That is not what we're doing for this project. We're actually not really needle felting. We'll only be needle tacking. The reason for that is, let me, well, I'm wearing this one so you can see it. See how fine this is? This isn't like a, th a thick needle felted piece, which is why it's totally wearable. It's, you know, summer here in, in Austin and I'm already wearing it. Can you see how gossamer it is? Even with, even in the areas that aren't cut out with holes. So to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna work with a drafting and tacking process. Oh, Makers, Jody from Makers is on, so she'll be here to help you. Hi, Jody. So look for Makers Jody, she'll be able to answer any of your questions. Okay, so to draft fiber, you wanna pull some of the roving off, and it doesn't need to be a lot, and you're just gonna pull pieces. out like this. And they do not need to be big. And you're gonna lay them across the width of your paper. And I'm kind of doing it at an angle and I'll explain why in a second. Now, think of your fiber as paint. You can either go as I'm doing and just pull, pull, pull and let the colors work as they are, or you can shake it up and add and mix your own colors as if you were working with paint. This is where it gets to be creative and also guarantees that every piece will be unique. So you're gonna continue just kind of doing this across your piece. Karn from the Netherlands, so nice to see you again. Thank you for coming. Um, yes, Diana asked if, if I'm using wool. Yes, it is wool roving. So you're gonna continue and you want it to be fairly thin because there's going to be another step and you would just continue going along. The second step is going to create, help create stability and that's called cross hatching. Deb, I see that you're asking about the foundation board we're, we're using. It's just a one, well, it might be a little like an inch and a half, but as long as you have a piece of foam of some form, this is called tacking board, but any foam of some form that's at least an inch thick, you should be good. And as Maker said, it's called tacking board and it is self-healing, which is great. Okay, so to make this work, you need to do what's called cross-hatching. So that means that you do one layer facing this way. And just so you can see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a color that I probably would not mix with this normally, but just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to do, use a contrasting color. So over that first layer, you would then go the opposite way. This actually looks kind of cool with these colors. And so what that's doing, in the same way that it would if you were building lattice for, or for a fence, when you crisscross something, it creates reinforcement. And it's absolutely, Mimi, you're absolutely right. It's like painting with roving. So you would continue doing that, you know, along your board and along your paper. Again, this paper is, at, is acting as your, st your stabilizer. Then you're gonna bring in your, one of your needle felting needles. And you'll notice, well, it's pretty obvious which end is which, there's, there's a little handle. But this is a special needle. I don't know if you'll be able to see on this phone. Now you can't really tell. There are little tiny barbs they're gonna help with the melding of the fiber. So Deb, the, the, the paper is a special dissolvable paper and I'll be showing you more of that later. It does look like interfacing, you're right, but it's not plain old interfacing. Okay, so from here, what you wanna do is just called tacking. And that, I'm gonna move over here, is like needle felting, only it doesn't have to be as vigorous or as close. You wanna make sure that you're using a up and down motion as if you were popping a balloon. Let me go around this way so I'm not blocking myself. And you want to do this 
actually I do need to go over here, about every, I don't know, say inch or so. And if you can, avoid going over the edges because the edges will actually felt to each other later, which is not dire. It is not a you know fiber emergency. If it happens, you can cut it. But if we can avoid the wispies, why not? So you want to do that. And you know that you're doing right if it looks like this. Can you see that? I'm going to move this. And as Jody's saying on the board, she's saying it's actually called art felt paper. It's a special paper. So you can see that if you get the little like sprigs happening that you're doing right. So you want to continue doing that about every inch or so, just essentially so it's all kind of in place. And so you'll continue doing that until your piece is fully covered. This is obviously a totally different colorway. So you can see that this piece is fully covered, it looks a little muppety, and that's just how it is. So from here, what we wanna do is we wanna cut our holes. So let's just stop and take a moment and talk about the roving. And if, with needle felting, we would have just kept going. We would have had to go for like 30 minutes, you know, just jabbing away. That would create a really thick, dense fiber. We don't want this for that, as we mentioned before, because we want it to have that gossamer look. So we really want it to be light and, and wispy, but because we've created that cross hatching, that ensures that there'll be enough stabilization, stabilization for this piece. Okay, I'm going to grab my scissors for the next step. Juliana is asking why we're doing this. If you watch at the beginning of the video, you will see that I am wearing a scarf, and this is just a mini version. I'm just showing you the steps on how to make the actual scarf, and you can rewatch it later on Facebook. Okay, so for your scarf, your scarf will actually be rectangle, mine's not. You're going to cut three rows of holes. And they do not need to be perfect. In fact, it's better if they aren't, because it will bring your scarf more interest. And if anybody's having problems watching the video live, it happens sometimes. Remember this Facebook Live inter, um, application is still relatively new. And so there's a lot of kinks that need to be worked out, but the recorded version almost always seems to work. So you can always give it a try. Okay, so then we've created one row. So we wanna stagger for the second row. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just do two, two holes in this space, but you would stagger them however you want. And honestly, just like if you were making a special paper snowflake, you can make this holy scarf your own. So you can do this however you'd like. Okay, so that's two, and now I want one more row. Right here. Sally's asking if I use the cutouts for anything. I have not, but if you come up with an idea, we would love to hear about it. Post it in the comment section, and maybe we'll make that happen. They're pretty, they're pretty small, but you could um, roll them and turn them into needle felted balls or something. So Donna's asking if you can cut any shape. You can. Um, Yes, you absolutely can. I'm not entirely sure. What's what's great about circles is is, be, is that they don't have to really be concentric. They don't really have to be, uh, they can be lopsided. And when I say circles, circles, um, if you wanted something to have a really distinct shape, you'd have to be very careful to make sure that, um, that you are sort of pristine about this next step with it, which I'm showing you. So you can use the needle that it comes with, or there's a handy tool by Clover that has a bunch of needles. So either one. And what you wanna do, I'm gonna use that one just because I saw Karen Scassell, who owns the company, use one, so I'm gonna use it too, because she knows all about this thing. What you wanna do is this is where the, on the only actual needle felting per se versus tacking is right around the holes. And that is to ensure during the felting process the water felting process that we'll talk, talk about later, 
that the actual circles stay. So I, I'm showing you with that. I'm also going to show you what that looks like if we, you do it with the... And I just kind of take my finger, watching your fingers, of course, pushing the roving. out towards the edges. And you would do that for all of your circles all of the way around. So once you did that, again, a different colorway, you'd get a little something that looks like this. And you'll even notice that within my step outs, some of them are a little bit thicker than the others. Um, and that's, that's just absolutely just me playing and having fun. You can play with how thin and and you know, web-like that you want this piece. All right, um, somebody's asking if you could use an Addy electric needle. Um, you absolutely can. That honestly might be a little bit too much like firepower for this particular project because we're really only tacking. Um, but you could use it absolutely around the circles. Why not? It seems like it would be a little bit much for the tacking, but you do you. Actually, you know what? It doesn't look like these holes have been done. I'm gonna use this. This is the one that the holes have been done. That looks better. I just had an extra step out. Okay, let me move that over. All right, so look how pretty that is. Doesn't look like, like a stormy sky, so pretty. Okay, so this piece is now ready. We're done with our needles. So that's it. You would do this for the whole scarf and that is the extent of your needlework. Super easy and cool and you know, relatively instant, instantly gratifying. All right, so at this point, we're also going to ditch our tack board and we are going to get a lasagna pan or a big baking dish, depending on how wide of your piece. It doesn't need to be as long as your piece, but it does need to be as wide as your piece. And again, you're your plastic is going to be a huge roll because you're working with a scarf and you would just unroll it and roll as you're working. I am working with small pieces because I am on a little camera. Okay, so you're going to need a pan with a towel in it and you need to fill the pan just enough to make the towel wet. You see if I push that you can see a little water coming. You're not going to see water above the towel unless you press on it. So just so it's super saturated. Then you're going to need some kind of water bottle and honestly ones that have, this is probably overkill also, but I got one of these because I couldn't resist and it was only like five bucks at the hardware store. This is for, probably for pesticides or whatever for a garden, but I, you know, I'm not going to use it for that. I just filled it with water and so then it has a little bit of pressure and it makes the whole process go faster. However, you could probably use a plain old watering can or a spritz bottle, but a spritz bottle would take longer. All right, so you're going to start to saturate it. To do that, you place part of it in the pan. Now, if you're working on the long scarf, just keep in mind you'll have a bunch of fabric out this way and you would just have it rolled. Don't even worry about it. You're only working with as much as can fit in the pan at one time. So can you see how you wanna make sure that all of the paper that's in the pan is wet and you can tell, you know, it's pretty easy to tell There, but then you wanna make sure that all the roving is also saturated and this is where our fun little, hold on one second, I gotta do a little pumping action. This is where our fun little tool comes into play. And you just wanna make sure that it's fully saturated. Okay, once it's saturated and that looks pretty good, you're gonna grab the plastic and lay it over and you want to make sure that your entire piece that's wet is covered with it. And again, this comes in the kit as well, this plastic. And then you're going to start rolling it and pull the piece until where there's another dry area. 
So you would, if you were working with a long piece, you'd pull that all out and you'd start, I don't have a longer piece, so it's not gonna be look exactly the same. You would do the whole process together. Got to add our water on top. Make sure that our plastic is over it, covering all aspects of the paper. And then you would roll it. If you were working with a scarf, you would have a really big log. Now I have just kind of a mini log, a mog, if you will. And so that is, it's going to look a little bit different, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to, I just made a mess. I'm going to give a little wipe here. Okay, so from here, we're ready to work on our dryer, the dryer aspect. So to felt, we're actually going to be doing our felting, not our drying, but our felting in the machine dryer. So, but what we want to do so that our scarf maintains the shape and doesn't unroll and then, you know, become a hot mess is we want to put it in a trouser sock. Um, somebody's asking if, Jul or Juliana's asking if there's too much water. No, there's not at all. I'm just, you know, kind of straddling a camera and working at the same time. So I personally made the mess with my sprayer over here. So you want to place, again, this will fit a little bit more snug if you're working with a bigger scarf log, but you place it in and it'll be probably really wet at first. So you can always squeeze some out if you'd like. And then you're going to just tie a knot and throw this in the dryer. You're gonna throw it on the dryer for, you know, probably 30 minutes total, but I would do 15 minutes at a time. You are not trying to dry the piece. You are just trying to felt it. So don't worry about it. I mean, don't try that because remember it's wrapped in plastic and so it just, honestly, it would never, it would probably never dry. All right, so what you would get, so you're gonna go in and you're gonna check it and see if it's felted. And you'll know that it's working if you unravel it and you see that the paper's really wrinkly. The dryer temperature doesn't really matter. You're only doing it for 15 minutes at a time. Now you can tell also that this is felted. Now what would happen, and I've already pre-done this so you're not gonna see this, but what will likely happen is that this side will have felted and this side will have not felted as much because of how many, how many layers of plastic this side had versus this side. That's not the case with this, but let's use our imaginations. So what I would do is I would re-roll it from the opposite side and then lather, rinse, repeat. Put it back in the stocking, put it back, you know, tie the knot and put it back in for another um, you know, 15 minutes and just kind of do that until you're happy with the felt. And you can see now, you can remove the plastic from here and you can see now it's pretty stable. You can kind of throw it around and you can already tell that the paper is starting to disintegrate a little bit. But what we need to do to really get it to disintegrate is to dissolve the paper. Now to do that, you need boiling water. If I were in my kitchen, <laughs> I would use a pot of water, but I am not. So I'm going to pull in a crock pot and hope for the best. You want to make sure that you have tongs because it will be hot. And you're going to drop your piece in. Now, if you're working with a bigger piece, like a scarf, you could just do this a little bit at a time. And you'll see, look at that already. Voila! Ooh, it's hot. The paper will dissolve. Man, that was immediate. I didn't think that was gonna happen so, so fast. That's awesome. Okay, and then what you would do is you would put it in a sink. Again, I'm in my studio, so I don't have one. I'm just using a ball, a, ball, a bowl. 
Let me move this out of the way. Give me a second. And you would just rinse to make sure that you've got the paper off. Isn't that great? So cool. Look at our holes. Look at those. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so then you're going to squeeze your excess out. And to dry it, you want to get a towel just to get the excess moisture out. And again, you would be working with a big piece, so you would do this step by step and then roll, step, and roll. But you lay it out. And you can also see it will shrink significantly because it is felted. When, when fibers, that is so cool. When fibers felt, they meld together and shrink, just as if you put a wool sweater in the dryer on accident and you would, it would no longer fit you. It would have to fit your child. Okay, so you've got that. And then you would just roll. And you would just kind of squeeze it out. And then from there, you could just hang it to dry. You know, if you've got, ideally you would have a long towel that you could start the drying process on. If you had a drying rack, that would be great. Um, anything like that. But I mean, honestly, look how cool this is. So again, all of this stuff comes in this kit, in the Art Felt kit. It looks like this. I believe it's about $39. And you get the, that's everything that you need. And then you end up with really, honestly, I can see a blackish version or a dark version being worn. I have a friend who's super into the opera and she wears these awesome avant-garde outfits. It would work for that. Or it would work with like jeans, a tank top, and flip-flops just for like a head-turning piece. So super great price point. Plus you get 10% off if you do, if you use Vicky10 in the code. Um, and so fun. And honestly, except for, you know, the hot water parts, it would be fun to do, to work on this at least a little bit with kids. I mean, older kids mostly, but, the, but younger kids could help with the drafting portion. Okay, so... That is it. No, you do not want to put this back in the dryer after you're done with the process. It will become misshapen. This really does need to lie out flat or hang in some way. All right. Oh my goodness, we did that. That was so fun. I'm so excited about this project. It's like the coolest. And I also love that um, it doesn't require a ton of time. Because as you know, I am a busy working mom of three, as I'm sure many of you are busy people. So I love to see things that are doable in my own life. I just sat in water. Um, and this is definitely one of those. Um, uh, Kalua is asking if the finished product is, is fragile. Not at all. Look. It's tough like wool felt even. It's really cool. Okay. Let me show you a couple other things that can be made. This is total sidebar, but you know, why not? A couple of other things that can made be made with needle felting tools and the paper, you can have a lot of fun making art pieces. So these are still on the paper. The paper hasn't been dissolved yet, but you can see how they've been experimenting with different designs. So you can have fun. These are, these are a little more than drafted. These are actually needle felted, but just to give you a little inspiration and fun. Okay, so Makers Mercantile is the company that sells the kit. Go to makersmercantile.com and once I'm done shooting this live video, I will also place the link in the show notes uh, area of the comment section. Should we talk about knitting now? Let's talk about knitting. Okay, so let's say you maybe aren't as into the whole, you know, felting roving process, or maybe you're so into the holy action that you want to do both. You want to make this scarf, and you also want to make a knitted version. Well, Scassell has a knitted version. The Maker's Mercantile carries it. I'm going to do a little switcheroonie here, okay? So this scarf which I'm kind of obsessed with now because I feel like it looks like flames, is knit. It has the same effect. This is a lace weight. They offer one that's a little bit more of a sport weight, somewhere like a DK weight. This particular one is made with one yarn ball 
that has a gradient, like an ombre effect in it. It looks like this, the ball. And it's made, this is um, Chappelle Lace Ball 100. They also carry this at makersmercantile.com and you just need one. And the pattern is in their Magalog, which I've put a link also in the blog too. And I think it's free, I think. Um, but this and the Addy um, Rocket needles to make it, information on their blog. I just wanna show you a cool detail though here. So it's got the holes and that's created with a series of bind offs and cast on. But what I love, because I've designed pieces like that before as well, where there's bind offs and cast on in the center. What I have not done and I think is brilliant is that the designer, which I should look up on the side, I realize I didn't look to see who the designer is, um, also did it at the edges every few rolls. So you get these really cool nubbins at the end and it adds just kind of a little bit of a whimsy to the piece. So this says it's actually just designed by the Chopelle design team. So there it is. So you can either make it in the lace weight and it takes one ball like I was saying or they also have the version that I think is the one that's on the cover of the magazine that's made with three balls of a thicker yarn called this one is edition three they're kind of like the Zara balls in a way they're kind of crazy and cool so you can make either it's all garter stitch but with interest garter stitch with interest is kind of my jam these days because I love the textural aspect of it and that's really it oh my goodness all right well we have had a jam-packed show I hope you enjoyed makers with Vicki as much as I did this was so much fun I love stepping out of my I too get kind of caught in one sort of creative box which is kind of an oxymoron but I do too and so the opportunity to kind of play and watch things literally form literally form before your eyes is so much fun so again all the links that you need will be in the show notes page and also on the Makers Mercantile blog. Use the code Vicky10. And I will see you here the next first Friday for another Makers with Vicky. We're going to be doing a little experimenting and we're going to talk about backing knit or crochet pieces with ribbon when button bands are involved. So it's reinforcing, but with flair, because it also adds a design feature. So that will be the first Friday of next month. All right, I'll see you then. Take care.